there is not enough physical silver. Now, when I say that, I don't mean that there's not enough silver for all of the industrial purposes that we use it for, you know, all the things that we need silver for, and there's quite a few of those. I don't mean that there's not enough silver on the planet for everything that humans need. But what I do mean is that for what is coming, there will not be enough physical silver to meet the demand in light of what is occurring in our economy and what is likely to be a scramble into safe haven assets uh, in light of a collapsing fiat currency and a collapsing debt-based system. So we're going to get into all of that today, and I'll go into some detail about why there's even less silver than we are being told. And the numbers are pretty surprising, um, but let's kick it off today in this live stream. And thanks for joining, by the way. Uh, I know it's kind of a late one, but I thought this was important because we're also going to uh, talk about what might happen with the silver rally and the price of silver tomorrow. Could be a big day. Uh, but let's kick it off with this lead story. Uh, Costco now selling as much as $200 million worth of gold bars monthly. That is according to Wells Fargo. This published today on uh, CNBC. And so uh, according to Wells Fargo, the revenue that... Costco is generating may now be running at 100 to 200 million dollars per month, a rapid acceleration since bullion hit the warehouse club late in the summer of 2023. So uh, this is a sign here that the rally in the precious metals that we are witnessing, uh, gold hitting new all-time highs, um, silver breaking out of a long-time consolidation pattern, hitting a uh, you know, new high after new high, um, not all-time highs, but the highest that silver has been in years. And we're getting very close to a major breakout level in silver. This story from CNBC is an indication that the retail public is beginning to pay attention to what is happening in the precious metals, and they're starting to get involved in this rally. And that is a bit of a change, because thus far, the rally that we have been witnessing with uh, gold hitting new all-time highs. I mean, it seems just like session after session, up now well above $2,300 in the price of gold. This has largely been driven by uh, institutional money, central banks primarily, buying up gold around the world, uh, especially in the BRICS nations, the anti-dollar hegemon loading up on large quantities of physical gold. Well, now... The retail public is getting involved. And that's a good sign for silver uh, because banks, central banks, don't buy silver, right? Uh, however, who does buy silver? Well, a lot of people have paper silver contracts. Uh, a lot of businesses, uh, industry, commercial traders, banks, they own positions in paper silver, whether that be short or long. Uh, but retail investors, you know, mom and pop, uh, you and me, Folks who want to hold on to some money, I mean, they're the ones who stack silver. And so uh, Costco picking up gold to, uh, you know, sales of that level is an indication that um, retail investors are starting to get involved here. And that's going to be very important for what happens with the price of silver moving forward. Now, let's take a look at what has been going on with the price of silver. Now, the gold to silver ratio here, courtesy of SD Bullion, down to 83 0.41. That's a significant drop. That's because silver has been rallying in a very big way, along with gold, actually outpacing gold. If you want to buy some gold or silver, make sure you check them out. That's where I buy mine. I don't buy it at Costco. Uh, right now, SD Bullion uh, has got these kilo bars, a buck 29 over spot. They're going for about 950 bucks. Um, but let me tell you why tomorrow I think might be a good day to look to stack some of these. Of course, none of this is financial advice, but um, silver has been on this absolute tear, right? When we look at its chart. I mean, it's just blowing through this uh, consolidation pattern. However, I mean, this is a pretty steep upward trajectory here over the past several trading sessions. Silver is now above 28 bucks. There's a good possibility that we could see a little retracement here. Um, I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but I mean, the way this has been moving up, nothing moves up in a straight line, and silver has gotten a little bit overbought 
Something I think we do need to be aware of um, before we get back to the shortages of silver and why there's not enough. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be getting some important economic data. Here's the market watch uh, economic calendar. You can see we get the CPI data uh, for March tomorrow. And this is very important. You can see here we got the CPI year over year. Uh, expectation is a 3.4% increase. Last month, we got 32 So uh, the headline CPI uh, creeping back up. Now, core CPI, they're expecting that to be up 3.7% year over year, down from 3.8% last month. Um, we'll see. Now, the important thing here is silver is perhaps getting slightly into overbought territory in the short term. And if we get a hot inflation report tomorrow, I think you could see a, a fair pullback in the price of silver. Now, that's not guaranteed. I mean, the opposite could also be true, I suppose, that we could get um, a, a, you know, a low CPI print, and that could perhaps uh, instill some confidence in investors that more easy money will be coming from the Federal Reserve. But, and, and, you know, that's really what's driving most of the price action at this point. And the fact that now, you know, Costco is selling all this physical gold, I think is a sign that, you know, the little guy, the retail investor is starting to get an idea of just how much easy money is really on its way. But tomorrow, again, in the short term, you might get an opportunity to load up on some silver. If you've been watching this breakout and you're, you know, kicking yourself for not buying when the price was cheaper, uh, you might get a little bit of a pullback tomorrow, no guarantees, but that is certainly um, something that could occur on a particularly hot inflation print. It actually, in the long term, would be pretty bullish for silver. I mean, if we got a pullback down to here, maybe around the $26 level, that was a uh, resistance level for years. If we fall down there and then bounce off, well, that ultimately would be uh, you know a confirmation of the new bullish breakout. But look, I mean... Any price movement that we see in the short term, while silver can move fast, I think will pale in comparison to what could potentially be in store for physical metal especially. You know, a lot of times we talk about buying uh, the miners, for example, and how that's a, you know, leverage to the price of uh, the physical metal. And that's true under normal circumstances. I mean, so far, the miners uh, have been really blowing, uh, you know, out of the water. Just, uh, you know, the price has been soaring even faster than the price of silver. But here's the thing with physical silver. We talked about the silver squeeze, you know, back in uh, a couple of years ago. Is it 2021, 2020? We were talking about the silver squeeze um, where, where people started talking about that. And, you know, nothing has really changed since then. Um, I think that in a lot of ways, people didn't see the breakout in silver that was uh, anticipated. You know, it went up to about 29 bucks and then came crashing back down. And uh, everybody thought, well, you know, this, this squeeze thing is out the, out the door. It's not going to happen. Well, I mean, what has changed since the silver squeeze? The debt has continued to pile up. Uh, we've got a global war now. You know, Eastern Europe, uh, Middle East, possibility of conflict breaking out in Asia, much higher than at the time of the silver squeeze. You've got a global uh, de-dollarizing world, a fractured global uh, system. Central banks have begun loading up on gold at the fastest pace on record. The deficit in physical silver that we had last year was, what, 190 million ounces? Uh, that's been you know hitting records, the deficit. So not much has changed that would rule out the possibility of a squeeze in the silver market. And... And we got a little taste of that last March when the banks started to fail. And, you know, that, of course, is a problem that really has just been uh, kicked. The can has been kicked down the road. We've got, uh, you know, rates are still elevated because the Fed knows inflation is going to run out of control when they cut. But they're going to have to cut because we've got an insolvent banking system. We have got a collapsing commercial real estate system, which is going to lead to even more bank failures, along with the fact that, you know, all the treasuries on their uh, balance sheet, all the low yielding treasuries still have huge unrealized losses. I mean, there's all these problems uh, that can only be solved by the Federal Reserve cutting rates, but that's going to lead to a whole new problem of its own in terms of, uh, you know, out of control inflation. And of course, this is the uh, ultimate outcome that you arrive at when you try to borrow your way to prosperity, right? When you try to uh, finance a uh, standard of living that is uh, outside of your means by running the printing press and by abusing the status of the dollar's world reserve status. But 
you know, again, the situation has only gotten worse for the dollar. It's gotten better for physical commodities. We've already seen commodities like cocoa uh, breaking out. We had a huge short squeeze in nickel back in 2022. And I mean, if any market is primed for a squeeze, I think it's physical silver. You, you know, you get a lot of people who talk about manipulation. Uh, put a one in the chat if you think the price of silver is manipulated. Now, I think it is manipulated. I don't necessarily um, adhere to the belief that manipulation is the primary driving force, but I mean, that's very well could be the case. It just seems like speculation to me. Um, but certainly there is manipulation that goes on. And, I mean, regardless of how much you think it is, this is how manipulation ends, right? A, a squeeze in the physical market. It's when somebody wants to uh, exit their paper positions in silver and there's no silver there to back it up. Um, that's when you can see the price of physical metal really explode. And I mean, this could occur in a fantastic manner. Again, look what happened to premiums on physical metal back in March of 2023. Uh, they soared through the roof. I mean, it, there were long delivery times. It's just that the Federal Reserve did some damage control and kicked the can down the road. But ultimately, all that guaranteed is that the problems in the banking system will just manifest themselves at a point in, uh, in time down the road, and the problems will be that much worse. So, you know, if you wanted a preview of what's coming, March 2023 was it, but that was when they were able to put a lid on it, right? They were able to get it under control. But very likely, that's not going to be the case. And this is also, I will point out, the inevitable outcome of manipulating the price of a critical asset like silver, right? One that you don't have enough of, uh, you keep the price suppressed, you create a shortage. It's economics 101. And look at this. I mean, this is the LBMA's gold and silver vaults. Now you'll notice that their gold has dropped significantly from the peak in 2022, but their gold holdings are actually higher than back in 2019. Look at silver. I mean, silver is near an all-time low. In fact, According to the data reported on the LBMA website here, their silver holdings, physical silver in warehouses, is at a record low level, just above 800 million ounces. Now, put a two in the chat if you might, if you're a little suspect about that silver even being available. Hello, Jeff Tooley, Tiger Thomas, and all the regular viewers in the chat. Uh, do me a favor, everybody, smash that like button and help this video out in the algorithm. Um, okay, so to give you an idea of the kind of nonsense that goes on in the warehousing, uh, that was the LBMA numbers. Here's the COMEX numbers. Let's take a look at this. This is from Mike Say 98 on Twitter. Um, he always posts these nice uh, infographics. Oh, that's an old one. Actually, that's for 2022. I don't know why I have that pulled up. I need the more recent data. Um, well, Look, I pulled up the wrong chart in preparation of this, but the takeaway here, it doesn't really matter. We can look at the old chart because this really was just illustrative illustrative of how they uh, control things at the COMEX and how they label things. So they have registered silver in their warehouse. To keep in mind, these are old numbers. Um, they have eligible silver. That is silver that, you know, is in the warehouse somewhere, but it's not necessarily immediately deliverable. They got their vault totals where they add up the registered and the el eligible. And then they got the open interest, which is the contracts. Each one of these represents 5,000 ounces of silver. Now, the open interest dwarfs the vault totals, but even the vault totals are very misleading there at, at the COMEX. And you can get an idea of what I'm talking about with this document here, this is titled Appendix C, Commodity Exchange Inc., uh, COMEX, Analysis of Deliverable Supply Silver Futures. This is from the CME Group website. And this is published in uh, 2021, this document, but I wanna draw your attention down here to something. Now the eligible silver in the warehouses, which is gonna be the biggest number, that's the silver that you know, supposedly is backing all this stuff up. Um, they wanted to do an analysis to, you know, see exactly what kind of claims were on this silver, how much of it really was deliverable in a pinch. And this is what they said. They said the exchange determined that this idea to base its estimates of deliverable supply of silver on registered stock, as well as other silver stock meeting all specifications of the silver futures contract 
stored at exchange approved depositories. The exchange recognizes that silver is used as an investment vehicle and as such, some silver stock may be held as a long-term investment, meaning some people may have a long-term claim on some of this silver. While surveys conducted indicated no clear consensus as to how much silver is dedicated to long-term investments, the exchange, in an effort to represent a conservative, deliverable supply that may be readily available for delivery, made a determination to discount from its estimate of deliverable supply 50% of its reported eligible silver at this time. Okay, so... Uh, someone points out in the chat here that Costco is now selling silver. Yeah, I actually covered that in a recent live stream. So not only um, is uh, Costco selling gold, but they are also selling silver now. It'd be interesting to see the numbers on that. And thank you, Jeff Tully, Tyber Thomas, for the uh, super chat there. So based on what I just read there, basically what they're telling you at the COMEX uh, via this document is that they've got the registered silver, maybe, but the eligible silver, which they also, you know, advertise as being silver on their books, they're only going to say 50% of that is deliverable. Now, why is that? Well, it's because they say this might be a long-term investment. Somebody might have a long-term claim on this warehouse. And it gives you a really good idea of, um, they might have a long-term claim on the silver. It gives you an idea of just how opaque the commodities uh, markets really are and how little we really know uh, you know, they're saying that their, uh, what, their surveys could indicate no clear consensus on who was owning this stuff. So, I mean, nobody really knows, right? And in the event of, you know, uh, a real systemic risk, a real systemic crisis, a real bank failure, I mean, the kind of thing which is inevitable based on the current system, right? We have a system where we now have you know, more than $34 trillion in debt. It's, it's growing exponentially. We've reached the terminal phase of d borrowing and money creation. Inflation is now, I mean, it's well beyond the Federal Reserve's control. I mean, first of all, the inflation numbers, they're cooked. I mean, they're higher than they really are reported. Like the amount of purchasing power that your dollar has lost is uh, not reflected in the official numbers. And yet the official numbers still remain well above what the Fed says is their target. And all this inflation is cumulative. Despite the fact that, you know, the Fed has cranked up rates, they haven't done it nearly enough. But the economy, even with the amount of hikes that the Fed has already instituted, is already showing huge signs of stress. It's not this great economy that we're being told, you know, you get these jobs numbers that come out. They say, oh, it's a strong economy. We've got all these jobs added. They're all part-time jobs because people can barely make ends meet with the level of inflation, the level of taxation, uh, the general economic malaise, which is the predictable result of all of this central bank meddling, all of this debt monetization, all of this you know, circumventing free market mechanisms. Every time we start to get a recession, the Fed comes in and you know stimulates everything, and all that does is it prevents the free market from solving the systemic problems in the economy, and as a result, they've become so serious now that the only solution is a major crisis, and if the Fed wants to avert that and not let the markets do their thing again, well, that means they're going to have to print huge sums of money. And again, uh, investors are starting to realize this, and I think it could be any day that you see a huge rush into the precious metals. I mean, people are going to start paying attention when silver breaks 30 bucks. Uh, you know, the last time silver, I think, was above $30 was uh, in 2013. And that's kind of the next big resistance level, right? So maybe we get a little bit of a pullback tomorrow on the CPI data. Maybe we don't. Long term, the trajectory for silver is up. I mean, it, from a technical standpoint, from a fundamental standpoint, you look at the chart of silver, the long-term chart, it really couldn't be more bullish. Uh, it's hard to understate exactly what a bullish chart this is for silver. Uh, the fact that it is just, uh, you know, absolutely spiking up, to gunning out of this consolidation pattern, this years-long consolidation pattern. The fact that gold right now is taking out record high after record high. It won't be long before silver, too, is taking out all-time record highs. And physical silver the kind you can hold in your hand. I mean, it may outpace the paper market tremendously or the paper market possibly could 
simply become irrelevant, right? I mean, it might just be that paper markets get halted altogether. That's what happened in the nickel market. The big difference is very few people take possession of their physical nickel. You know, they just keep the paper contracts because who's got room for tons and tons of nickel, but silver and gold are different. You can get them into your possession pretty easily by visiting, uh, you know, places like SD Bullion, Re reputable dealers, folks. Uh, you want to stick with them. Uh, that is where I buy mine. If you want to get some, check them out. Not financial advice, of course. Um, do you remember this story? Uh, here's another example of why you really have got to be circumspect about all this paper silver out there. I mean, we've looked at this story before, but this is so important to keep in mind from Business Insider. When JP Morgan thought that it had bought $1.3 million worth of nickel, but all it had was a, a warehouse full of rocks, I, how much of the silver in these warehouses is physical metal? It's really going to be sad, uh, I think, for individuals who only have paper, silver, and gold positions. Um, it's really going to be a sad day because if you don't have any physical, like let's say you hold a bunch of the SLV ETF, you know, you watch uh, some silver stacking videos, you know, you do your own due diligence, you do your research, you decide that uh, silver is just the right thing for you. You think it's undervalued. You think it's uh, fundamentals and technical picture is good. And you say, all right, I'm going to buy some. You go out and you buy a bunch of shares of the SLV, whatever's a bunch for you, you know, whatever a significant allocation is. And then, uh, you know, uh, maybe a year later, a couple months later, maybe a decade later, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to put a time frame on it, but just for this story, I mean, think about what that'll be like when the bottom falls out of the dollar, there's a sovereign debt crisis and everybody is clamoring to get metal and you can't get any. All you can do is sell your paper silver for fiat dollars and, you know, the price that you get may be significantly below the actual price of an ounce of physical metal. So there's nothing wrong with paper instruments. I mean, they're very liquid. You know, they're better for trading. In some circumstances, uh, you know, miners may outperform the metals. I mean, they haven't for many years, but I think that could change. But this is why you've got to be diversified because you don't know exactly how these things are going to break. And even among your metals, you got to be diversified, right? I mean, I think it's good to have some bars, some coins, some gold, some silver, some platinum, uh, some 90% junk silver, some fractional gold, some gold backs, uh, you, because you just don't know exactly what the right metal is going to be. Likely all of it will be appreciating in both nominal terms and in purchasing power, but you know, you just don't know what you don't know. And if you don't have any physical, well, I think that there could be a very rude awakening for investors of that ilk. And it'll be sad because they will have made the right decision to get into the metals, but they won't actually have any. Um, so, you know, unless you want to hold a paper claim on some rocks in a warehouse, make sure you get the physical metal. And again, you know, I'm not giving you financial advice. If you've got a bunch of high interest credit card debt or something like that, I mean, don't go out and rack up more buying, you know, coins. You, you got to set your own priorities. You got to do your own due diligence. You got to do what's right for you. But for me, I have decided that getting my hands on physical metal is the way to go. And I mean, look at this story. This is one from uh, Bloomberg from 2021, but it's another illustration of why there probably just isn't enough metal in these warehouses. Trader buys $36 million of copper and gets painted rocks instead. Uh, so look, I mean, unless you have it in your physical possession, you might own some paper silver somewhere that says you own some silver, but how do you know that it actually exists? I mean, have you toured the facility, right? I mean, the SLV is, um, the, the custodian is JP Morgan, I believe, and even they have bought warehouses full of rocks. I mean, do they even know what is in their uh, ETF? You know, do they know what's in the warehouses? Um, also, don't forget that JP Morgan traders are the ones who have been indicted for spoofing the precious metals markets. And they're the custodian for the largest uh, silver ETF. So, I mean, think about that when you're looking at paper uh, silver instruments. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, shun them at all cost. If you want to get some leverage or, you know, trade some options or something, you can't do that with physical metal. But all of that really is just gambling and speculation. Physical silver 
is real money. And that's why people want it when the banks start to fail, right? That is why when people turn on the news and they see uh, Silicon Valley Bank is collapsing, they immediately go and place an order with a physical bullion dealer. That is the reason that people have that reaction. And we're starting to see that, again, with gold, Costco selling, uh, you know, a, a very high uh, number of bars, you know, accelerating number. That's what I meant to say, the rapidly accelerating revenue from precious metal sales. And, you know, Costco is, uh, I think, a good bellwether for sort of the average consumer, right? Maybe not the completely average consumer. If you're out there buying gold, uh, even if it's from Costco, you're probably, um, you know, head and shoulders above others in terms of preparedness. But it's a broader audience, let's say, than just a, perhaps a specialty dealer um, or, or, you know, your local coin shop. Um I know that SD bullion, you know, back in March of 2023 had a huge influx of orders and their sales numbers were, you know, huge, like huge orders. They had to implement a $500 minimum order. And I'm sure they didn't want to do that, but they just couldn't get through all of the orders. Uh, and again, that was a preview of what is to come. And you just got to remember that there's not enough metal out there to back up all the promises on it. And perhaps under normal circumstances, um, that would be, uh, you know, completely normal to have some derivative out there trading at multiples to the underlying asset and setting the price. I mean, it seems weird to me, uh, but that's the situation that we have in the precious metals. But at the end of the day, what can you do with a paper contract? You know, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And that's the reason that we have that saying is because it's time and time again been proven throughout history that uh, paper cannot always be trusted. It's like J.P. Morgan said, you know, only gold is money, everything else is credit. And I'm sure if you'd asked J.P. Morgan uh, in person, he probably would have lumped silver in there too. It might just have seemed, uh, you know, very petty for a man of his wealth to talk about uh, silver. But certainly at that time, uh, you know, we had silver currency in this country. We had, uh, you know, your silver dollars, your silver dimes. And I think a lot of that stuff is still... Um, Something you want to get your hands on. The junk silver, I think, is really going to move when this squeeze comes. I don't have any out right now in front of you here to see, but silver quarters, silver dimes, silver half dollars, uh, to some extent, Morgan and Peace dollars. I mean, the premiums on those are already pretty high, but the premiums on all of that old stuff is going to go through the roof because they're not making it anymore. And when demand goes up, um, there's a very, very inelastic supply. Anybody out there, any stackers who might have been selling junk silver. You know, premiums on it were fairly low uh, as the price moves up. I mean, the sentiment changes. They're going to require much higher prices to uh, sell. So, it, look, I mean, uh, Travels and Conversation says, why isn't my super chat showing? I'm not sure, my friend, if you gave a super chat. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate everybody who supports the channel. Um you know, if you have a question or something like that, feel free to ask in the chat here and I'm, I'm happy to answer it, super chat or not. Um, but look, I mean, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, gold and silver, you know, they're breaking out. Um, I appreciate everybody who, who watches and subscribes to the channel. It's going to be a very interesting day tomorrow, but more importantly, it's going to be an interesting remainder of 2024 now that this breakout is underway. And I mean, really, it's just getting started. If we get a dip tomorrow, I'll be grateful for an opportunity to buy some cheaper metal. I think all dips and pullbacks at this point likely should be viewed as buying opportunities, not financial advice, just how I will be interpreting that. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Stay safe and happy stacking, everybody. Smart Silver Stacker, out. Uh, no, travels and conversations. It is not too late to start stacking. It's never too late um, you know, to swap fiat for physical metal. And I, I think that in terms of timing, I mean, this is a great time to start stacking because the breakout literally has uh, just gotten underway. I mean, it's got a long way to run. So uh, thanks, everybody. Smart Silver Stacker out.